So before we do start this video, I first want to say I'm sorry everybody that we have not signed Nico Williams yet. We were supposed to sign Nico about two to three weeks ago, but nothing has been said regarding his operation. If anything, the only thing that we have been hearing in the past 24 to 48 hours is that he is going to be staying at Athletic Club for one more season. And as we did explain in the previous video, Barcelona will only come for Nico one time, and that will be in this summer. If Nico Williams decides to leave Athletic Club next summer of 2025 and and he wants to join FC Barcelona, Barcelona are going to be moving on to other plans and they will no longer strive for his transfer. They're going to be looking at other players and my own speculation tells me that most likely Barcelona are going to want to have either Musiala or Florian Verts by that summer, which is the reason why Nico Williams will not be approached. Also, his release clause might be 100 million euros by that time, so no way is Barcelona going to move for him a second time. So stepping away from that, now let's also speak about Dani Olmo, another player that Barcelona do want to achieve in terms of completing the deal. And it says here, according to Santiago Valle, that Barcelona want to seal the deal for Dani Olmo as soon as possible. And Deco has already sent a second offer for RB Leipzig. Leipzig have promised Olmo that they will let him leave for 60 million euros this summer. Barcelona's intentions is to reduce the amount and make the payment more flexible. So if you guys do not know, right, Barcelona have already submitted their first offer to RB Leipzig, but they did not even respond to that offer. We got left on red. Red. Leipzig looked at the offer and they laughed. What Barcelona submitted was 40 million euros fixed and paid over the next four years with the first payment starting in January 2025. I know, right? It's ridiculous. We did in some way lowball RB Leipzig, but it is what it is, right? RB Leipzig wants 60 million euros minimum. And the new offer that Barcelona have presented, which is their second offer, is 50 million euros fixed plus variables, which is going to bring it up to a total of 65 million euros to RB Leipzig. An offer that the club could accept. Now, I'm going to be very honest here. I hope that this is not Barcelona's last signing of the summer. I really do hope that Barcelona continue to make reinforcements because if we finish this summer just signing Dani Olmo, that is going to be so embarrassing because we still have two other positions that we need to reinforce, right? In the beginning of the summer, back in May, we all thought that Barcelona are going to be reinforcing the CDM position and the left wing position. If Barcelona end up just signing Dani Olmo, we did not reinforce neither of the those two positions. They're major holes. And the one solution that Barcelona are going to bring up is going to be an injury prone attacking midfielder? Really? Are you serious? Barcelona have to do much more than just sign Dani Olmo. Like, yes, he's a great player. Of course, he is going to be successful at the club, but there is leaking holes. Now, keep in mind, I have also explained that the reason why Barcelona have not gotten a CDM yet, not Zubimendi, not Mikel Merino, not Joshua Kimmich, is because Hansi Flick does bet on Bernal and Casado to be our main players in the double pivot position. And to me, that's fine. I just find it insane that Barcelona were unable to deliver in terms of transfers on both the left wing position and also the CDM position. And so look, going back to Dani Olmo, I hope that this is a manager decision type of move, because if it is just the board that wants to bring the player in, the player, Dani Olmo, may not work out under Hansi Flick's system, because maybe Hansi Flick may want Pedri or Gundogan or maybe even Gavi or Fermin Lopez to be operating in the attacking midfield position. And that would be embarrassing for us to spend this much money for somebody who does not even get used a lot. Like for example, Xavi Hernandez never asked for the signing of Vitor Roque. Deco wanted the player right at the board and wanted the player and it did not end up working out throughout the first six months of Vitor Roque at Barcelona. He got no minutes, he did not play and every time he did play, he played on the left wing position. The exact same idea that Hansi Flick is bringing with Vitor Roque, he's being played in the left wing position. But look at what happened when you brought in players that Xavi Hernandez wanted, which was Adam Atrore, Luke de Jong. It worked, they delivered, they showed results, they scored goals. You see what happens when the coach gets to decide what players come in and what players comes out. With Dani Olmo, I hope this is not the case. I hope that Hansi Flick is the one asking for the player. With Nico Williams, it all makes sense, right? Because all parties agree that Nico Williams is a player that is wanted by Hansi Flick and Deco. And so I'm not here to try and say that Dani Olmo is a bad player and that he should not be coming to FC Barcelona. No, I'm sure that if he does come, he will have his moments. It's just that we are in a time of restrictions and I want all transfers to be perfect and I really do want it to work. So now moving on to towards the next conversation. And I do want to speak about Lenglet. It says here, according to Foot Mercato, that Atletico Madrid have started discussions with Lenglet's agents. The contacts have also been made with Barcelona and Lenglet wants to join Atletico Madrid. So Lenglet is that one player that we just simply don't want, but Lenglet does not see that. I think that I, I speak for the sporting staff, the coach, and us as a Barcelona fan base, right? We don't want Lenglet. And Lenglet, in the past two years, has not been wanting a permanent move. He has been loaned out to Tottenham 
Birmingham. He has been loaned out to Austin Villa and both of those loan deals were very underwhelming. He's 29 years old and I think that it is time. It is time for him to finally leave. There has been offers coming from Saudi Arabia and he still did not want to go. I'm like, dude, you're 29 years old. Take the bag. Take the money. Take the 30 to 40 million euros a season type of deal. Just leave us alone, please. If Atletico Madrid end up taking Lenglet away from us after two to three years of trying to let him go, I'm never ever going to talk shit about Atletico Madrid ever again. I'm going to give Atletico Madrid all my respects. I'll be like, thank you, Atletico Madrid. I'm going to have a flag on the wall and be like, just thank you for taking the problems away from our lives because Lenglet is one of them. Now, on a serious note, Lenglet is a player that I think is good. He's solid. He's not bad, but nor is he good. In this game against Manchester City, he played pretty decent. He had 72 touches, five out of five long balls were completed, one out of one tackles were won, one clearance, one headed clearance, two interceptions, six recoveries. He was only dribbled past once, which was, I believe, the one with Kovacic when he was making that run through the middle. But overall, I think that Barcelona is okay. We don't need the service of Linglet. We have Kobarsi, Kunde, Araujo, Inigo Martinez, Mikel Falle that can all cover those positions. We even have Andreas Christensen who can play in the midfield or in the defensive line. So please, if Atletico Madrid can give us around 35 to 45 million euros, I believe that all parties would be very happy. Now let's move on towards the next conversation and let's speak about Rafinha. It says here, according to Fabrizio Romano, that the agents have approached Rafinha once again this week to understand his stance on a possible move to Saudi Arabia. His answer was clear again. He wants to stay at Barcelona and that is his priority. So it does seem like Rafinha is going to want to stay at the club. I remember there were some journalists asking Rafinha whether he was going to continue at Barcelona and he said yes. Like he is very determined to succeed. It is going to be considered as his third season with Barcelona that's coming up. And honestly, I can't wait to see him play because every season he is getting better. Unfortunately, last season, Rafinha did encounter some injuries that did not lead him to bettering his numbers. But I believe that if we have a healthy Rafinha, somebody who is 100% focused, who is intense, aggressive, that wants to win, Rafinha can easily achieve a 25 to 28 goal contribution season. For sure, he is in his prime years. And you just have to respect that because you can just sense his work ethic and him wanting to win. He also covers both positions, which is the right wing position and the left wing position. Why let the player go? He is definitely a Hansi Flick type of player. So props to Rafinha for making a firm stance and not accepting the Saudi Arabia money because, you know, any other Brazilian, and we have seen it in the past 20 to 25 years, they would take the big bag. Look at Oscar, look at Neymar. When the money is there, it usually does attract them. But with Rafinha, he's okay. He's like, I want to have sporting success. Moving on towards the next conversation. And now let's speak about Mikel Merino. It says here, according to Mateo Moreto, that Arsenal are just one step away from signing Mikel Merino. So it does seem like Barcelona are going to be losing out on this CDM, a player that played amazing during the Euros. Mikel Merino was one of the transfer targets for Hansi Flick, but, but it does seem like Arsenal are going to be the ones achieving the player because they are giving him a better salary, maybe a better sporting plan, giving him more prominence because at Barcelona, obviously, you know, Mikel Merino will be seen as a second option and a reinforcement to our double pivot. And to be very honest, I'm not too angry or frustrated about us losing on Mikel Merino because after what I have seen with Marc Bernal and Marc Casado, I believe that Barcelona will be okay because we have not even talked about Frankie and Gavi and Christensen yet. That position is fully covered. And I believe that instead of us looking for a player that brings experience, let's look for players that can give us many years and do have the potential to reach a high ceiling. And I do see that with Casado and Marc Bernal. Most likely, we will be seeing those two players in the match against Real Madrid. And that match is going to be very telling on just how much they want this. We're still not going to be having Frankie, nor Gavi, and Christensen is still on vacation. And so now lastly, I do want to speak about Pablo Torre. And the main reason why I wanted to bring up this conversation is because I want to ask you guys this. I want to have you guys' input. Do you guys believe that Pablo Torre has a spot at Barcelona or has a place at this club for the next season? Do you think that he is good enough? Because right now, Pablo Torre has really been delivering for the club. He scored a goal against Olot in the first preseason match behind closed doors, and then he scored his first official friendly goal in the match against Manchester City. So he has two goals in two games. And besides those goals, right, we don't even have to talk about the way that he does put the ball at the back of the net. Pablo Torre is a player that you can count on to be playing as a central attacking midfielder. Now, when you have players like Gunugan, Pedri, Fermin Lopez, maybe Gavi, and so forth, right, if you want to stand out from those group of players that are very talented, you need to be a central attacking midfielder that can score goals. And Pablo Torre knows how to do exactly that. And he makes himself always available in the middle of the pitch. He supports the defense. He supports the attack. He was running everywhere. And keep in mind, in this match against Manchester City, he was playing with a broken wrist. But to Pablo Torre, it does not matter. At the age of 21 years old, this guy is building a case on why he should have continuity at the club.
club. Now, we all thought that Pablo Torre was supposed to be that player like how we see Fermin Lopez today, but Pablo Torre is looking very strong. In the match against Manchester City, he played 61 minutes, had one goal, 22 out of 22 passes were completed, so he never misplaced a single pass. One shot on target, one shot off target, 42 touches, two touches in the opposition box, six passes into the final third, one out of one accurate to long balls, one clearance, one headed clearance, three recoveries, and he was only dribbled past one time. He won four out of seven ground duels, and so these are excellent numbers. So let me know in the comment sections down below, do you see a place for him, or do you see this as an opportunity for him to be sold for a higher amount than what we were supposed to sell him for originally? And so that is it. That is going to be wrapping up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.